Well, we've seen all kinds of truck wrecks here in the Northwest involving bees, eels, cascading crab and falling fish. Like the others, this one could have been so much worse. At first glance, they don't even look like fluffy feathers as much as a spiky pile of whitish quills. A semi going from Kelso to Mount Vernon on its regular route flipped on its side. DOT on the job with buckets and street sweepers to clean up the mess as the feathers turn even grayer. And northbound traffic backs up from Federal Way into Tacoma. Our Jake Wittenberg caught up with the driver who seemed to be okay. What was it like being inside the truck? It happened so fast, you know, you don't realize it. Uh, you know, when I hit that rail, that's when I wake up and I knew I was in trouble. The driver telling us he had a safe career until falling asleep behind the wheel. I've been driving for 27 years and never had an accident. Later, at an I-5 way station south of the accident scene. It affects everybody in, in this area. Every road going north this morning was bumper to bumper. I met up with State Patrol Commercial Vehicle Enforcement Officer Jonas Mast, a former truck driver and driving instructor who found himself caught up in the backup. If you and I go out and drive, and we drive for an extended period of time, we could be sleepy at any time of the day. The State Patrol employing multiple techniques, from tracking trucks at a way station like this, to emphasis patrols to find tired drivers, which Mast has performed himself. We find them. We do find them. The Mass says State Patrol numbers for 2017 find that 90% of commercial vehicle accidents last year were caused by human error and not just by falling asleep. That can also be hard to prove, but fatigue can lead to groggy driving and poor decision making. In this case, the driver was charged with second degree negligent driving, a $550 fine. Had this been a multiple vehicle accident or a fatal accident, those penalties could have been much, much, much more severe. So, Glenn, what does the law say about how much a driver can drive in a day, and what do we know about this Okay, case? so think of a day as a 14-hour day, a shift, if you will. Based on what he told us, you can drive 11 hours of those. So if you're driving somewhere, you have to wait for a load to be we'll put in your truck and then drive, you've got that many hours left. And then when you're done with that, you need a 10-hour rest period, which they presume is going to include some sleep. And what so, do we know about this case? This guy seems to have, he looks like he got plenty of rest. Uh, State Patrol says he was off s uh, Saturday and Sunday. Uh, log books all seem to be in order. It's one of those weird things. Mm -hmm. And Glenn, what does one do with thousands of pounds of chicken feathers? Actually, they're quite valuable. So this was eventually heading to a rendering plant in Vancouver, B.C., a big one. They, I called them. They said they turned this into high-protein animal feed for farm animals. But it's keratin. It's the same stuff in your fingernails, mm -hmm. basically. And you can make a now. You can make very tough plastics for it um, and thread and, of course, pillows and things like that. Wow. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Glenn, thank you.